Chapter 7. The Dark Years. In zoos, chimps can live to be 65 years old. In the wild, they don't live nearly as long, perhaps 40 or 50 years. Why? It is much harder to survive in the wild. Babies have the hardest time of all. Baboons may attack and kill them. Some years, there isn't enough food to go around. Chimps in the wild also catch diseases such as pneumonia or the flu, which zoo chimps are protected from. In 1966, an outbreak of polio swept through the forest at Gombe. It killed several chimps and left others with crippled arms. Polio is a disease that can also strike humans. But since the 1950s, there has been a vaccine to prevent it. Flo managed to avoid polio. But in August 1972, old age caught up with her. Jane wrote a letter to her family that Flo had died. In it, she said, I had known her for 11 years, and I had loved her. Jane also wrote about Flo in London's Sunday Times newspaper. It was the first time that there had been an obituary for an animal. Flo was probably around 50 years old when she died. Her youngest, Flint, was eight and a half years old by then. He was a strong and well, he was strong and well past childhood, but he could not bear life without Flo. Three days after her death, Jane saw him staring at Flo's empty nest. Flint stopped eating. He stopped traveling with the group. Instead, he stayed by the spot where Flo had died. He soon fell ill. There was nothing Jane or the students could help do to help Flint. His death on September 15th was heartbreaking. In 2012 on the television show 60 Minutes, Jane said that at first she had thought that chimps were like humans, only nicer. Perhaps she had Flo and David Greybeard in mind when she said that. However, the longer Jane remained among the chimps, the more she saw that some of her early ideas about them were wrong. Chimps had a very dark and violent side, just like humans. In 1974, a war broke out, a war within the chimp community. A couple of years earlier, the chimps at Gombe had split into two groups. Both groups remained in the home range, but they stayed in different parts of it. The war started after six male chimps from one group attacked a male chimp from the other group. The chimp was beaten savagely and left to die. The attacks went on for almost three years until one group was nearly wiped out. Jane wrote about the battles in, May, in the May 1979 issue of National Geographic magazine. And then there was passion. Jane had observed passion for years. Passion seemed to not have an ounce of kindness. She neglected her daughter, Pom. It was pitiful watching little Pom beg for her mother's attention. Uncaring was one thing, but in 1974, Passion did something so awful the researchers at Gombe were stunned. Jane was away from camp, but heard the story upon her return. Gilka had just given birth to an infant daughter. Like Flo, Gilka was a loving mother. She was sitting in the sun, cradling her tiny newborn when all of a sudden Passion appeared. Without warning, she cha charged at Gilka. Gilka tried to escape, but Polio had crippled her hand. She could, not run a sp she could not run fast enough. Passion snatched Gilka's baby and, after killing it, fed on it until every last bit was gone. There had been several instances of babies suddenly disappearing. Now Jane believed that Passion had probably killed them too. Why did she behave this way? Jane had no answer. But Passion's actions forced Jane to change her thinking about chimps. Another awful event struck the camp the following year in May 1975. This time, the chimps were not involved. Armed with grenades and guns, a group of men came into Gombe and kidnapped four students. They demanded money for their freedom. A ransom was paid, and the students all returned unharmed. But after that, no more foreign students lived at Gombe. Instead, trained field staff from Tanzania did the work of American and European research students. Grubb was growing up. Now he spent the school year in England. It was lonely without him. Jane spent less and less time at Gombe. The nature of her work was changing. In 1977, the Jane Goodall Institute was founded. 
Its goal is to continue the study of chimps at Gombe and protect them, as well as other wild animals. Then, in 1986, Jane attended a conference with other scientists who studied chimps. They discussed an alarming issue. Unless steps were taken, wild chimps might become extinct. One day, there simply would be no more of these amazing creatures left. Why? Their forest homes were being destroyed to make way for villages. That meant there was less food for the chimps to eat and less land for them to roam in. There had been about a million chimps in Africa when Jane first arrived. Thirty years later, that number was down to about 300,000. Jane began a program called uh, Take Care. Through it, more than a million trees have been planted in Africa to bring stripped forests back to life. Take Care also helps people living near the chimp groups improve their lives. Another of Jane's projects, Chimpan Zoo, was started to improve the lives of chimps in zoos. Jane saw that they needed larger spaces and homes that were more like chimp homes in the wild. She toured labs that worked with chimps and spoke out against labs that mistreated animals. Today, Jane is, still has a house in Tanzania. Grub and his children live right next door. But Jane comes to Gombe only twice a year for short visits. She spends 300 days a year traveling around the world, giving talks to make people aware of the causes that are most important to her. Jane's mother, Van, who died in 2000, always encouraged her daughter to follow her dreams. So it seems entirely fitting that Jane would want to do the same for her children today. Oh, same for children today. In 1991, a group of 16 local African teenagers met with Jane and started the first Roots and Shoots Club. Roots and Shoots Clubs are for kids who, like Jane, want to learn about animals as well as ways of protecting them. Now there are Roots and Shoots Clubs in more than 120 countries. And to think, it all started with a funny toy chimpanzee named Jubilee. Where do chimps sleep? Chimps make nests to sleep in. A chimp finds a place in a tree where several limbs branch off. In just a couple of minutes, the chimp builds a nest by bending the branches together. This nest is where the chimp will sleep that night. Usually, a nest is only used once. The next day, the chimp will build a new nest in a new tree.